Well, the first thing I want to say is that Netflix took a gigantic L with today's episode because they forgot to put the English subtitles on Vinland Saga. And so if you don't know Japanese, I think there was uh, a couple of other languages on there too. So I guess if you're multilingual, you might have a subtitle option that can fit you to a point where you can understand the episode. But I did not because I am an ignorant American and I only speak English. And so I was not able to watch the episode on Netflix, so I switched to Crunchyroll. And then, of course, I didn't remember my Crunchyroll password because I haven't logged on in like over a month and it signs you out automatically. So I had to go through that. So I, you know... I did like a lot of uh, a lot of work to watch this. No, I don't know. But yeah, I don't know who dropped the ball on this one. I don't know if it was somebody that was supposed to put the episode up. If somebody, you know, unlocks a tab somewhere that allows the English subtitles to go on. Whatever the case, maybe it's fixed by now. I don't know. It's a couple hours later. Maybe somebody fixed it. But if you have been watching this series on Netflix as the episodes release... Unfortunately, you're going to have to find somewhere else to watch it if you need English subtitles because it was not there. I also noticed that when I leave off on the episodes uh, every Monday, it comes back up and says that there's a new episode. Today, I actually had to go into Netflix and search it. So not only did Netflix completely fuck everybody over, over by not allowing the extra password sharing in other households, I had to go over to my mom's house and create like a whole new account for her because she was using my Netflix password and now pay an extra $7.99 a month and... Now they can't even put subtitles on like the only Netflix show that I am watching. Man, this is some first world problems. How about we actually talk about the episode because none of that stuff really matters at the end of the day. What matters is Vinland Saga. <laughs> I think I would just call Vinland Saga season two art at this point, particularly this episode, but the entire season. This is just art, the, the way that everything is perfectly cohesed into one unit with the voice acting, the animation itself, the music, the color palettes, everything when Thorfinn and Einar are standing there at Arnid's grave, uh, seeing the birds flying above them, the grass moving beneath their feet, the music swelling, uh, the finale of this episode with the uh, the text on the screen saying to make your mark, basically to uh, you know dig this hole in the dirt and create something and use that as a way to leave an impact uh, as a metaphor on the earth, but also in somebody's life, which is exactly what Thorfinn and Einar have done here. Uh, by being slaves at this farm, people that are considered to be absolutely insignificant as slaves, you know, no voice, no rights, no anything, have left such a significant impact on this farm that everybody here is forever changed. Olmar looks to Thorfinn and says, I wish to be a man like you. Olmar, who in the beginning of this season, you know, wanted to kind of go off into war, was faced with this idealism of, you know, his older brother's legacy, the legacy he thought his father had, and he wanted to kill someone just for the experience of killing them, and Thorfinn was going to be his target. Now, you know, flash forward towards the end of the season, he is looking to Thorfinn and saying, I hope that someday I can be like you. And I think that, to me, it just shows that no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, no matter what your circumstance is, that if you have the drive within you to try to do better, by proxy, you are going to make the people's lives around you better. The more that you build yourself up as a person, the more of a pillar that you become, then it bleeds out into everything else and everybody else around you. And I think that that is largely some of the themes of this season, but uh, particularly this episode, because it shows where all the characters have gone from where they began. And we still have one more episode left, you know, but we're dealing with the resolution of what's happening on the farm. And none of these people are the same as they were before. And it's mostly all because of a slave, of somebody that's deemed inferior, um, of somebody with a horrific past that's done horrific things of somebody that is chosen to try to be better, to try to do the right thing, to try not to hurt people anymore, and to try to find another way to solve a problem other than just enacting violence. You have to lead by example, and Thorfinn will go on to be a great leader, but he has to do the work himself. He has to put himself through the ringer, right? He is the one that decided to go speak to King Canute in a way that nobody else on the farm uh, even thought about talking to him. Now, Thorfinn did have the history with Canute, correct? 
but it's not like they were best friends. In fact, Thorfinn did kind of try to kill Knut the last time that he saw him uh, in a blind rage. So they didn't leave on the best of terms, right? And even here, when Thorfinn is in front of Knut, Knut has that nagging voice in the back of his head, which takes the form of King Swain's severed head, saying, you should just kill him now. Just kill just kill him now. Just kill Thorfinn now and, and be done with it. He's here. He's unarmed. He's already, he's already beaten up. He's surrounded. He can't do anything. You know, it's just this sort of... Uh, this black darkness, you know, within Canute of solving the problems that he needs to solve by any means necessary. And that's where Canute has shifted. He has shifted to a place where the ends always justify the means. He's raging a war against God himself, as he so puts it, as he's trying to create this heaven on earth. And he's pretty much willing to do anything that he has to in order to accomplish that. Thorfinn here shows up and simply asks him, Please don't. <laughs> Please don't take the farm. And it's so outside of anything that Canute has ever experienced before that he just starts laughing because he's like, you literally came up here, no weapons, no plan, nothing up your sleeve, no ace in the hole. You you, you got nothing. All you did was just come up here and say, Please don't take the farm. <laughs> and it's just like, it hits him in just this... I think it's just that moment where everything with Canute had become so serious that this situation is so ridiculous that he can't help but express that energy other than just laughing. It just it's just so ridiculous that he just he just doesn't know what to do. He just starts laughing. Um and and then we get this interesting sort of split between the two characters because neither one of them is really going to give up what they're doing. Uh, Knut has a moment here uh, of clarity, I guess, but he's not going to stop being the king. You know, he's not going to stop uh, taking that extra step when he needs to. But it was his ploy to to get this farm. It is, uh, at the end of the day, you know, sort of his everything here is his doing. And he finds it amusing that the world he's creating is has um resulted in a man like Thorfinn like a man like Thorfinn with what he's doing can exist within this Viking world um is nothing but a good sign for Canute in a way I at least I feel like I, I I feel like he sees that and he kind of is is intrigued you know he's intrigued by the idea that a man like Thorfinn can be born of this and you know he mentions what Thorfinn will do like under his rule and Thorfinn just says that he's going to run that he does he won't be in it he'll he will just run he just doesn't want to be part of it and he'll do whatever he can to not be part of it because he recognizes that Canute is punishing the few in order to save the many and is that overall is that overall like the best thing to do and even Thorfinn says I don't know you know and it's it's always going to be that moral question you know it's the trolley problem like are you willing to you know, kill one person to save four people. It's always that question of like, is it worth hurting the few to save the many? And that I think is a moral question that's always going to exist within humanity. And I don't think that there really ever is much of a right answer when it comes to that, right? But Thorfinn decides that he just is going to try to not be part of it uh, and that he will run, he will create something different. And so you have these two men that are going about things in two different ways that kind of agree to part ways. I think the ridiculousness of the situation helps Canute agree to this. He also sees, you know, that Thorfinn can come from this. So maybe there is good that is happening here. Uh, and so they decide to go about uh, the same idea, basically creating a world of peace, but through di two different ways. And so Canute is going to maintain his territory and go go further beyond you know and for Thorfinn him and Einar decide that they're going to create uh the land of Vinland and of course this is where it all comes full circle the Vinland saga the very first episode of the anime Thors and Leif Erikson were talking about this place um you know with green pastures a place to build a place uh far away from here on not within the rule of any of these kingdoms and uh somewhere where you could perhaps rest in peace, right? He gave, uh, in the first episode, Thors was telling the story to the dying slave so he could imagine this world, you know, this fantasy at the time 
uh, so he could die peacefully, even though he lived like this hor hor horrific life. Um, but what if it wasn't a fantasy? What if we could actually create it? And they used the motivation of Arnid's death and the thing that she, all the things that she had to go through, and all the pain and suffering that she she went through, to push them to want to do this, to save that fate from happening to anybody else. Um, so Arnid's death does have meaning and does have purpose. And again, she left an impact on the lives of Thorfinn and Einar, somebody seemingly insignificant, right? That had everybody, everything taken away from her that was made a slave. She still made such a huge significant impact on somebody that they literally are going to create an entire new country or at least try to, right? Which that's huge. That's something like it's a domino effect, right? That creates something huge. Uh, and I think that a lot of that is the purpose of uh, the finale of this episode where it shows all the characters working and farming and building and uh, saying to leave an impact. I forget what the actual text says now that I'm like talking off the cuff, but like um, I think that's really what it comes down to. It comes down to leaving your mark in the dirt and like the difficulty of creation as opposed to destruction. Destruction is very quick and very immediate. Creation takes a long time. But the fruits of the labor, you know, after that time building, uh, create and make so much more than any than destruction, which creates nothing, which brings everything back to zero. A um, couple of interesting things to note about this episode, as opposed to the manga, is that this episode adapts chapters ninety eight and ninety nine. Uh, as I suspected, although things are changed quite a bit. The moment in front of the gravestone with Thorfinn and Einar actually happens in the manga before Thorfinn even goes to speak to Canute, before he even gets punched in the face a hundred times. So it's a completely like they agree to do it, and that's sort of uh, the beginning of what prompts Thorfinn to go talk to Canute. So uh, that was switched, and I, I, I can understand the switch because... It does feel kind of epilogue-y. You know, it does feel kind of like we've completed this and now we move on to the next thing. Uh, I think it works in either spot. I don't know which one I prefer. You know, the anime has changed things around uh, before. You know, like they changed um, the very beginning of the anime. You know, starts with Thorfinn and Askeladd. And then, I mean, uh, the be beginning of the manga starts with Thorfinn and Askeladd. And the anime just starts it with Thorfinn's childhood, so they changed that. Like I said, the garter sequence was all done at once, whereas it's kind of intercut a little bit more in the manga. So uh, it's not anything new for them to change things around. So I don't know which version of it I prefer. Uh, I guess I'll have to sit on it, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day to me like where it's placed because its impact, I think, works no matter um, where you place it. Although one funny bit that they are not able to add is that Thorfinn... Uh, after he gets beat up a bunch of times, you know, you know, gets hit in the face a hundred times, he goes to the ship with Leif Erikson to leave and his face has swelled up so much that he like can barely speak, which is played for humor in the manga, uh, which you don't get in the anime. So in the anime, when he's saying goodbye to everybody, he's saying goodbye to Snake and, uh, you know, um, oh, why did I forget? Svedkil, the old man, and Olmar. You know, he's saying goodbye to them in the manga. He's like, you know, muffled speech because his face has swollen up so much from all the beating. So uh, a little bit of humor that's missed there. But I can see they were going for a more emotional, impactful ending with this episode. So that probably would have thrown it off a little bit too much. So I get it. I understand it. I'll deal with it. Um, yeah, but overall, really, really enjoyed this episode. So, yeah, so now we have the characters returning to Iceland, which I believe the final episode will probably cover all of chapter 100 in the manga. Uh, I don't believe it will go further because then we're kind of, uh, we're kind of getting into the next storyline. I, I don't really think that they want to, like, kind of start it. They'll tease it, and I think that, um, like, at the end of season one, it kind of shows the other characters that we'll meet eventually. I think they might do something like that again. Which would be kind of cool. It'd be cool if they did that like every season, you know, just sort of showed a tease of like other people. Because you remember um, at the end of season one, they did show Einar on the boat and they showed a few other characters that we still haven't even met in the anime yet. So they might do that again, uh, which would be cool to see. Great episode and only one episode left of season two, which will be uh, very sad to see, man. Very sad because this has been a great season. Um, one of my favorite arcs in manga finally getting adapted, uh, Villain Saga season after like four years since season one. Um, 
I remember just waiting around for this, man. I mean, like, I remember just waiting so long for season two, and now it's over, or it's going to be over in one more episode. So uh, that's going to hurt, man. It's going to hurt not having our Villain Saga Mondays anymore. But I can definitely say that I think that this season is art. I really do. I think it's uh, tremendous. The the job that Mappa did and everybody that worked on this is um, it's just tremendous, man. But Netflix, Netflix, you suck. <laughs> you suck, man. Come on, an extra $7.99 a month and you can't even give me subtitles? What's with that? Uh, first world problems, man. Anyways, guys, uh, let me know what you thought of the episode down below. Leave all your thoughts and comments and opinions on it. And anime onlys, leave your theories for the next episode. Let me know what you think that we're going to see, what you would like to see. And if you don't know what's going to happen in the manga, where do you want to see the story moving forward? So let me know all that below. Uh, give the video a like and a comment to help it in the algorithm. If you want to support the channel on a deeper level, I do have a Patreon merch store, channel memberships, all that stuff turned on, as well as all the social media links where you can follow me down below. Other than that, guys, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you next time.